all right, I'd like to call to order the special call meeting of the Bone Green Board of Commissioners for June 16th, 2020. I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. And I'm here too, so we'll go to the first item, which is city manager comments. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we just completed our fourth annual photo contest called We Are Bowling Green, and I'd like to announce some winners, if you don't, if you have a minute. Under uh, Judge's Choice, our third place uh, went to Beautiful Bowling Green by Wayne Garman. Are we going to flash these up here? So Beautiful Bowling Green by Wayne Garman came in third. This is Judge's Choices. Our second place winner was Worry Less, Paddle More by Lily Van Wyke. So that's our second place winner. And then first place under Judge's Choice is City and Quarantine by Eric Denton. So congratulations to those uh, Judge's Choice winners. I have one other award real quick. It's uh, called the People's Choice winner. Uh, there were 320 votes cast uh, for this person this winter. And the winner of this is Stunning Silence by Ann Massey. So congratulations to those four individuals for participating and winning uh, these places in our fourth annual uh, city photo contest. And thanks to Kim Lancaster for coordinating, coordinating that for us. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Next item is approval of minutes from our special meeting on June 2nd, 2020. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? And Wilkerson, yes, that passes unanimously. The first item is Municipal Order 2020-91. Municipal Order approving the appointment of John Anderson to the Bowling Green Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Uh, this is the Hotel Motel Association representative. They forward names and Judge Buchanan and I agreed on John Anderson and they have voted on it last Friday. Uh, are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Ash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Easley Brown? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Municipal Order 2020-92. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2020-59 for concrete from Garrett Brothers Continuous Mix Incorporated of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $54,995. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. As you know, we need uh, and use concrete all throughout the city for maintenance of sidewalks, drainage structures, street repairs, parks maintenance projects. We went out for bid, we received one bid. Uh, it was from Garrett Brothers Continuous Mix uh, formerly known as uh, Kenway Concrete, and it's for $54,995, and we are requesting uh, your approval on this bid for concrete for the coming year. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Wilkerson is a yes, that motion passes unanimously. Next is Municipal Order 2020-93, Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2056 for police ballistic wear from Dolls LLC of Lexington, Kentucky and CMS Uniforms and Equipment Incorporated of Nashville, Tennessee. Motion by Wilkerson and Perigen, Mr. Meisel. We went out for bid for uh, police protection supplies and equipment uh, on 29th, we received three bids uh, Summit Uniforms in Nashville, Galls LLC, and Lexington. 
masks, uniforms, and equipment in Nashville. Uh, Galls was the only one that submitted a complete bid for every item. Uh, they were the lowest bidder for our, for the Point Blank and Pulse, Pulson products and a majority of the Paraclete products, 11 out of the 15 items. Uh, Summit Uniforms had some low bids on three or four items, but we are recommending Galls uh, as a vendor for the Point Blank, Paulson Paraclete items and recommending uh, CMS Uniforms for the uh, couple of items under items, I think it's five through eight. So uh, we've already been working with Galls and CMS for a number of years and recommend approval of this, these two bids to Galls and CMS uniforms to supply a police department. All right, any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. I have a quick question. I'm sorry, I missed it. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was talking to Katie earlier, and this is a replacement for just existing protective equipment. Is that right? It's just something we purchase annually? Or not yes. annually it wears out every five years or so. Is that right? There are some bulletproof vests included in this. Uh, those are the high dollar amount, high dollar amounts that we have. Uh, we did get some grant money that we have to match to pay for these. But yeah, this is an annual annual exercise where we just restock. Thank you. That was it. Any other comments? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Municipal Order 2020-94. Municipal Order Accepting Intermodal Transportation Authority Incorporated Fiscal Year 2021 Operating Budget. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perrigan. I believe we have a visitor with us today. Are you passing it over to her? Yes, uh, we are uh, blessed to have Mr. Zansky with us today uh, to, to kind of cover the highlights of this ITA budget. We are annually due to the general obligation uh, 2007 and will continue uh, until 2023. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to Meredith to kind of give you a, an overview of the FY21 budget for the ITA. And thanks for joining us, Meredith. Thank you for having me. It's great to see all of you all, even if it is virtually. Um, I understand that you do have a copy of the presentation in front of you, and so I'll just walk you through very quickly. If you have questions along the way, please feel free to stop me and ask those questions. Uh, the first slide, as always, is an updated picture of what the map looks like. Um, just a couple of um, items to pull your attention to, since I can't show a, a red pointer. If you look at the right-hand side of the map, you'll see a lot more green. Um, than you saw last year, and there's sort of a white block in the middle. Um, the ITA was fortunate um, to be able to um, have under option and in the process of purchasing an additional 296 acres to expand the trans park um, so that we can continue to grow and have opportunity. And um, we have drawn down all but 83 of that. We actually signed the closing documents today for the remaining 83 acres, so we'll have all 296 acres. Um, under the control of the ITA as of close of business tomorrow. Um, also, just above that sort of white block, you'll see the large yellow building. That is where Crown um, Cork and Seal USA that we celebrated the groundbreaking of back in February. Um, that is where their new facility is located, and we are very excited. If you haven't been out there, um, I encourage you to get out, enjoy this beautiful weather, and go see it. It's pretty amazing to see the blasting going on and the construction. Um, with everything going on um, around the pandemic, uh, it seems like the world stopped for a while, but it's really great to see progress um, back up and going uh, and really looking forward to having them join our community. If you'll turn to the next page, um, you'll see the annual wage assessment income. So that shows you sort of where we've tracked over time. And we have been doing really well in tracking above 2 million on wage assessment, um, obviously, this year with the shutdowns associated with the pandemic, 
Um, we did see a decline and we had some significant furloughs in the transpark. And as a result, we're expecting a little bit of a slower ramp. And so that's why you see the projection for 2021 um, being down uh, as well. If you'll turn the page, uh, you'll see the revenue side of our budget. Uh, just a few items to draw your attention to there. If you look at the third column and you'll see the uh, budget, the original budget for uh, this year, and then where we expect it to end up. Again, that wage assessment, we did go back and do a budget amendment with the ITA board um, because obviously with the pandemic and the furloughs, we were not gonna hit the 2.1 in wage assessment. Uh, property tax income um, was, is projected to be up a little bit uh, because of new activity within the park. And then you'll also see a deep, the increase this year on the lease revenue was due to the cannon sale um, that we had a property there ex had the ability to expand their facility um, as per our interlocal agreement any proceeds from land sales uh, go to all of you to pay down the debt service uh, that jeff mentioned earlier so you see that increase there because we made a payment that went against the bonds um, and then the lease revenue for the 2021 budget is reflective of what are their current scheduled um, lease payments based on the current amortization. Um, knock on wood, we are working on a couple of projects where we hope to be able to sell some additional property. So hopefully next year that will be up again because we've made some additional payments on um, And then I'll call your attention to the grant income line item. And that money is coming from the state um, through a return from TVA. So there are some TVA taxes that are paid to the state and have historically been used by the state um, through a lobbying effort last year. The counties that are in the TVA territory lobbied to have that money returned um, locally to be used on economic development projects. And so that's what that um, amount is showing. So the first year is about 52,000, which we received in the current fiscal year. And then they made the current fiscal year payment of 101, and now it's supposed to be 150 going forward. So that's what you see budgeted for 2021. And again, and that is for infrastructure related expenses. And then if you'll turn on over to the cash operating expenditure, the trend line, um, we always show this because initially when the business plan was done years ago on the trans park, they were expecting operating expenses to kind of go through the roof. And that's why you sort of see it off the um, trend line. Um, originally, uh, we tried to stay around the 450 and did for um, many, many years. The increase that you see that happened in 2016 was when we took over uh, the maintenance of the um, right of ways and the medians within the park that previously was paid for by the city. Now the ITA takes that on. So that's why you see that expense there. And you'll see different bumps over time depending on what projects we're working. So if there's a big project, typically it takes a lot more legal work. Um, so then our um, expenses go up slightly and then they'll go back down. Um, so the, the, the increase there that you see in 2020 is because of the work that we did related to uh, Crown. So we had to do some engineering work and some legal work in order to win that project. So it's a good thing that we had a slight increase because we got a big project out of it. And then on the next page, you'll see the operating expenditures. Uh, just a few things to point out here. On the management fee, the third line, um, we have a contract that accounts for 3% increases, and so that's why you see an increase there. Um, professional fees, again, that's related to our legal fees, our accounting fees, and our engineering fees, and we are working on a couple of projects that we expect to sort of spill over into the new fiscal year, which is why we have an increase um, projected there. So again, a good thing because we are negotiating to win uh, a couple of new projects, which is great in a time where you have a down economy. And the other item I'll pull, point attention to is under miscellaneous in the current year. You see that 42.5, which looks very unusual. Um, with Crown choosing the lot that they wanted with lot nine, um, we did have a farm lease on that with crop in the ground. And our agreement with all the farmers is in the event that we have to sever an agreement, we reimburse them for cost into the property at the time. And so that was the one-time payment to Mr. Spinks, um, who was farming uh, lot nine when that came about. Um, you'll see the 
cost of land sales at 49,440. That was the cost of on the ITA's books for the acreage that was sold to Canon. Um, and then, um, and you'll see coming up um, at the end of the year, we did on June 1st close on the land with Crown. And so you'll see that increase because um, that was a land donation. And then the other expenses, that 100,000 would relate to those grants that you saw at the top of the screen. Um, turning on over, you'll see for calendar year 2019, um, we did $375 million um, worth of investments in projects um, and 951 new jobs, all in Bowling Green and Warren County. And you can see the companies listed there. And then on the final page, um, you'll see what we've announced year to date. So 150 million um, and 141 new jobs, the majority of that being Crown, Cork and Seal. Um, but what I would tell you, as I do every year, stay tuned um, because there's some big announcements coming to you. So fingers crossed, we intend to be positioned um, to take advantage of those that, you know, due to the pandemic are rethinking their global supply chains and want to better control and have um, regional opportunities. Um, so we're going after several of those companies. But I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you, Meredith. I believe Sue has a question. More of a comment, um, Jeff and I both serve on this board. And it's, a, it's a great pleasure to serve on this board. And I want to say, I want to just give kudos to Meredith. We we go through these nurse, you know, every other month and, and it's such a professional organization and the work that they do, they, they uh, go in detail and show us all the numbers, but they also show us the funnel where they have gone after uh, projects and, and where they are in the funnel. And there's, there's literally hundreds of um, economic development opportunities that they're reaching out to and taking advantage of and uh, and and landing a, a sizable number of those 300 and something million dollars worth and we're already halfway there so i just want to give kudos to the board <coughs> that, that serves to to bring um, economic development out there to the trans park we also serve to bring economic development to the skip the southern kentucky industrial uh and and so thanks meredith that's it's more of a comment than a and a question, and I want to say how much I really appreciate. These are good jobs, and um, maybe a, maybe a statement about the Crown Cork and Seal jobs, uh, Meredith. That they're they're all very high paying jobs. These are these are good things. Yeah, they they are very good jobs, and they intend to employ 126 um, to begin with. Um, they did um, want the 44 acres for future expansion. This is going to be a very large facility, and um, again, they make aluminum food packaging products. So much like Logan Aluminum with the uh, aluminum cans, um, they're making similar uh, food packaging and they're actually both a supplier to and a competitor of Logan Aluminum. Um, so we're getting some great synergy in our area um, with local companies. And they say and, these jobs are careers. They're not jobs, these are careers. When the team came from Crown, uh, we had their management team here. The one with the least amount of time and grade in had 28 years with the company. It was really impressive. Um, definitely a place you want to work, and their benefits package is amazing. <laughs> right. So thank you for that. I just wanted the community to know that that just just because we're kind of sh shut down a little bit, that that economic development rolls on. And thank you. Um, we could not do what we do um, without the support of the city and the county, making this a business friendly environment and making it easy to do business here. Um, you're, you, that is something that we always get a wow from. I know the mayor and the judge are um, in all of our site visits um, when we get down to the final stages, but they really are wowed by the fact that our community works so well together um, and really does have the, the end goal in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Bridgen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. The motion passes unanimously. Municipal Order 2020-95, Municipal Order authorizing the acceptance of an economic development bond grant from the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development for Crown Cork and Seal USA Incorporated in the amount of $250,000 in approving and authorizing execution of grant agreement. Motion by Wilkerson, second by 
Harrigan, Mr. Meisel. Can't hear you. Sorry about that. As uh, you all were just talking, Crown Cork and Seal USA Inc. Uh, has made a big splash and uh, their project is a $147 million project with, with 126 jobs. They were awarded a, an economic development bond from the state for $250,000. And in order to get that, then it needs to pass through the city. So this is a municipal order authorizing that to happen. Uh, we, we've done this before with, I believe, Constellium years ago, uh, a, a much larger amount, but uh, this will be passed through to us. We'll just pass it over to Crown Court Conceal once they request that money. So just need a, uh, an approval on this one. Are there any questions or comments? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Brown? Yes. Yeah. Wilkerson is yes. The municipal order passes unanimously. First reading of ordinance BG 2020, number 11, ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a portion of two tracts of land containing 0.211 acre from light industrial to central business located at 0 and 907 Broadway Avenue, presently owned by Thomas Hunt. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Harrigan, this is a recommendation or unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning for that rezoning. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call you. I'd to see somebody, Bruce, uh, yes, take care of that corner because it's a mess. It is. Uh, the David Roach commented on it because he worked there for years and years back when it was Roach TV. And yeah. Saw it on Facebook. So, any other comment? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. The first reading passes unanimously. It'll be brought back up for the final vote the next time. Next is Ordinance BG 2020, number 12, Ordinance Rezoning Real Estate. Ordinance Rezoning a tract of land containing 2.53 acres from central business to planned unit development located at 1149 College Street, presently owned by United Housing Partners, Bowling Green LP, with SP Investment Fund LLC, Kara Gill Seaton as the applicant, motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Uh, this is also a rezoning uh, unanimously recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission for the towers, are there any comments or questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Bruce, what do they have in mind overall for that project there? It's kind of been a problem ever since day one. Uh, what is the newest problem? I'm not sure that it's a problem based on my reading of the, the uh, application. It appears that they're converting some uh, open space downstairs in the lobby sales area and in the penthouse area to, to more housing. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of that it includes a redevelopment of the entire property. It's just the interior sections is the way I'm reading it. I don't think anybody from planning and zoning is on our call. They are not okay. mayor, but I spoke at length with Ben earlier about this particular development and your description of it is correct. They're just taking what is either business space or open area space right now and turning it into more residential units and then taking some of the larger apartments or maybe it's even one apartment that they have and turning that into more units that more people can live in. Uh, they ended up going with the planned unit development uh, designation, moving from central business to that because with what they're doing, it fit that designation better. Central business required that there be some commercial property on the first floor, and they don't have that anymore, so they didn't fit into that anymore. And planned unit development ended up being the place that planning and zoning thought they fit the best. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? 
I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Harrigan? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson, yes. The uh, motion, we had motion passes unanimously. And Ben is following up with a text, Ben Peterson saying simply converting all the retail into residential. So you, we're accurate in our descriptions there. Next is Municipal Order 2020-96, Municipal Order Accepting and Adopting the Bowling Green Fire Department Policy and Procedures Manual dated June 2020, motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Mazel. Thank you, Mayor. This is just an administrative item to update the Fire Department's uh, policies, policies and procedures manual. Uh, Chief Colson uh, did a complete uh, redo back in July of 2017 and he's going back over again uh, now and cleaning up some items. In your packets, you have a, a really good summarized memo, memo from Jason uh, of 46 items that will that are contain the revisions uh, in the policy manual, which is around 380 pages, I believe. But uh, the, the memo kind of describes all of the changes that have been made in that manual and uh, Chief Colson is here with us today in case anyone has any questions. Thank you. Anything you want to add, Jason? Nope. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Benning? Yes. Nash? Sorry. Yes. Harrigan? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson, yes, the municipal order passes unanimously. First reading of ordinance BG 2020-13, ordinance adopting annual city budget, ordinance adopting the city of Bowling Green, Kentucky annual operating budget for fiscal year being beginning July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30, 2021 by estimating revenues and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. Just want to give you a, a brief uh, recap. This is a balanced budget for the general fund. Uh, there are no tax rate increases being proposed. There's no general fund. There's no new debt uh, being, being proposed for the general fund. Uh, we have had to uh, put a pause button on the merit and step raises this year. However, we are uh, doing a 2.3% COLA to the employees. All funds uh, were decreased by 9.7% on the revenue side, and the general fund revenues were ha had to be decreased by 7.4%. Uh, we are using some reserves in some of the capital project funds, uh, but all of this could be uh, adjusted later as we see uh, a need. So we're gonna watch this very closely over the, in the next uh, three or four months to see how things are going with, with the, the COVID-19 situation, but this is a, 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 a decrease from last year, both all funds and general fund. And we, we did some, some extra work on projections this year with revenues and feel confident uh, that this is a good starting point for the FY21 budget with, with the notion that we know uh, we could do budget amendments later if we have to, so. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? I know we had the opportunity to see the, the budget presentation that was on video and normally done in person, but we got to watch it and rewatch it at the, to find out and, and the detailed information in our booklets, uh, three, three ring binders full, by the way. So, and we had the opportunity to submit our questions. Are there any other questions or comments? That, so. Just, a, just a comment, Bruce. Um, unbelievable job, guys. I, I just hope that everybody that had a hand and was involved in putting this really difficult budget together, uh, just please tell them thank you on, on behalf of me, and I'm sure the rest of the commissioner don't want to speak for everybody. Uh, outstanding, really amazing, and uh, and I, and I hope it I hope it sticks. You know, well actually. At minimum, I hope it sticks. If not, I hope things open up and we, we surprise ourselves with extra revenue. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? As I mentioned, as I mentioned in the budget presentation, this was probably my hardest budget ever because uh, you know where you want to go, but you don't know how to get there. 
So um, it, it was a challenge trying to figure it out. And I want to thank Katie, Aaron, uh, and the budget team, uh, Sean and Aaron Ballou for, for all their hard work and for the last six months that they've been looking at this stuff and trying to figure it all out. So it was a team effort. I'd like to thank the department heads for all their cooperation as well, as I mentioned in the, in the, in the budget video. So thanks to everyone. And thank Hunter for the video. The video was outstanding. Yes, absolutely. Hunter covered up a lot of bleep, the foul ups, bleeps, and blunders in that presentation. So. Are we going to get to see the bleeps? Uh, probably not. <laughs> the outtakes? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. It was a great job. Dana, did you have a question? Yeah, first I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, it really was amazing when I got to sit down with our CFO and Jeff and our assistant CFO, and they just walk through um, the hard uh, job, I can't imagine, of trying to forecast what our revenues will be, and just the time and care they took to really learn as much as possible about what the impact of the pandemic has been. Um, I'm just, we are so uh, blessed to have such an incredibly dedicated team, and the amount of hours that you all spent on it is just really, um, I'm really grateful for you all. And I'm also really grateful for the ways um, the entire city has uh, been such good stewards of our resources during the good times. Um, because I, you know, looking at the news and what other cities have had to do in terms of furloughing a lot of people and laying people off that we haven't had to do that, I think speaks to um, how what great um, stewards of resources that the city of Bowling Green has been. And also just thankful for everyone who is a you know, part of our economy and growing it the way that we have and uh, understanding that how di diverse our economy is locally is also what has really helped to buffer the impact so far. So um, I'm just excited about how the private and public sector together and all the ways that we've done that has put us um, in this moment. So I just wanted to first say thank you. And then um, secondly, the, thanks for the video. There has been a lot of public engagement in this budget and I've received lots of questions from citizens and um, I just wanted to pass some of those along um, just so we can make sure that we are um, you know, responsive and, and getting, helping people become more involved in our budget process. So um, first question is around our sidewalks and greenways program. Um, it, I realized that we um, are having to cut every department's budget. And if, if uh, I don't know if Katie or I don't know if Greg is on here, but just talk through, um, you know, we're are still going to be able to build some sidewalks because of the capital project we'd already planned regarding small house and the downtown project. Um, but just question around is the funding that we have every year for the sidewalk program. Um, is this a planning to cut for just permanently or is this just because of the current revenue projections just talking about sidewalks and greenways would be great this is specifically for this upcoming year our our plan is not to cut in the future um, we were just trying to balance the budget that was a place we could choose uh, regarding capital projects we do have funds still appropriated for our sidewalk program it will continue in the next year it's just not receiving any new funding uh, at this time through the budget process, um, but there will still be projects moving forward, obviously, with, with um, money we've provided in the past that has not been spent yet. Um, Greg Meredith, our public works director, did respond back um, to a couple questions, and uh, the phase two part of downtown street project will approximately be about $2 million. We're still in the process of saving up money for that project. So I'm not sure when it's going to move forward at this point. Um, but we do plan, obviously, to, to, to make some more improvements in the downtown area. And then the small house extension of the multi-use greenways trail that they have, um, I think it's from Ridge Crest um, up to Broadway, um, Scottsville Road, will be approximately $350,000. That funding is currently in um, the FY20 appropriation that we gave for small house phase three. 
So we believe we can continue that project without any new funding in FY21. Um, but we do hope, obviously, we, we uh, established a new Greenways expansion program as part of this new budget. And we did put $150,000 into the budget for FY21 to be able to start that program. Um, so we, we are continuing with sidewalks. Uh, we also received some grant funding, TAP grant funding from the state to make improvements to existing state sidewalks in the next year. And I think that was around seven, six hundred or $700,000. Um, so we will continue to be making improvements and adding new sidewalks. Um, we just weren't able to add more budgeted funding, but, but we will continue that project. Thank you. I think, you know, we've of course learned a lot of, uh, from the pandemic and it's uh, with all the gym closing and the sports teams having to, um, you know, cease from participating in, in youth sports, it uh, is clear that investing in ways for our community to stay healthy and active is definitely going to be important moving forward. Um, so I'm glad that we have invested what we have so that people can get out and um, be healthy. Uh, my next question is around... Um, the HR budget, it looked like there was a cut to the workforce diversity program. And so I'm just checking, um, are we going to have flexibility to continue to invest in this work um, within the broader HR budget, or is this going to reduce our ability to continue to diversify our workforce here in the city? We, I'll, I'll speak to that and Katie can, can chime in and Aaron as well. Uh, we saw some trending that we weren't spending all of the money that had been budgeted in some areas. And so we trimmed some of those line items back just a little bit to help out with the general fund budget. And, but if anything, if the need arises, we'll, we'll, we have contingency that we can use to take care of anything that we, we feel we need to do uh, as far as recruiting and diversity and all that that sort of thing. And I'll let Aaron and Katie add any comments. Katie? That covers it. <laughs> Aaron? Any additional comments that uh, we, we, it is, it is very typical that we do our best in the year in advance to kind of decide what we're gonna spend our money on. And, and we do use um, history to kind of help us get there. Um, so if, if next year there's a different story, we have the ability to move money across funds to take care of new projects. Great, thank you. Um, my next question is related to um, the city's response to the pandemic. I know that the county has uh, manage most of the local response, but um, uh, in terms of the city part, um, it, it seems like the, um, the International Community Liaison Office was really our point person on the city's response. And so I just was checking to see if we had um, equipped that office to continue to do that work, if we get another spike, or are we getting CARES money to do that? We believe we have a uh, really good chance of getting reimbursement on uh, our expenses in that in that area. Uh, Brent Childers is working with, with uh, some people on that, uh, trying to get information on what what's uh, qualified expenditures related to COVID-19. The governor has set aside some some money for each locality uh, that we can tap into once we apply for it and prove that we have expenditures and this would be one area we're going to apply for for reimbursement with with all the local testing that we did uh, we are hoping uh, that we we, we kind of learned from the first round of this and that we will be able to uh, do it even more efficient the next time if, it, if there's a spike that reoccurs later on and uh, but we are planning to 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 uh, apply for funding from the Federal CARES Act and the COVID, as well as the state money, the $300 million that the state is divvying up to all the localities. 
Um, my last couple of questions are um, the police department budget. There seems to be confusion. I've got a lot of questions or comments about adding four new sworn officer positions, but I didn't see that in my budget um, document, so I just ask for clarification on that. Aaron, would you like to take that question? Sure. Um, so we were really hopeful when we applied for a grant, it's called the COPS grant, um, and um, to be able to get some funds to add four new police officers. And we are working on a staffing plan from Chief Hawkins. This would have been the second year that we would have been adding additional officers. So the, the rules are, are very clear in the grant that you can't the plant funds basically saying you cannot both apply for the grant and then budget for it in case you don't get it that means that you have the money for it so um so we we didn't know when we were going to hear a response on the grant and we we found out the the budget was complete we had already balanced it and, and then all the work we needed to get um back about a week ago when we found out that bowling green was not a recipient um, of any of those grant funds so like a lot of things in this next fiscal year, we're going to have to see how things go. Um, we would like to keep up with that staffing plan. We'd like to be able to continue to add the officers that we think that we need for our growing community. Um, but we will not be able to decide that until a little bit later. And um, if we did do that, um, the plan was not to add those positions until March of 2021. Um, that would be the, the second class that would have gone through our academy. and. So we, we have a little bit of time to decide whether or not we're going to add those positions based on revenues are coming in later. And, and then we would seek to do a budget amendment for those funds um, to be approved by you all. Okay, so but in terms of this budget, it does not include funds for new police officers. It does, it does not currently add funds for those police officers, no. Um, so the next question is, um, oh, uh, the improvements to the 911 call center. Um, could someone tell me a little bit about the improvements being made out of the police budget for the 911 center? I'll take a stab at that. And Doug, you can, uh, Chief Hawkins, you can fill in the gaps, but we are uh, working on the replacement of the dispatch cons console uh, the desk that they use these consoles are roughly 15 years old we're, we currently have around seven i think in the room we're going to reconfigure the room uh to try to get two more in there and so we've applied for i believe a grant for this as well and we're thinking it's going to be around 136 thousand dollars we also had planned to replace the uh uninterruptible uninterruptible power supply replacement uh it's a ups which is when the power goes off this kicks in until the generator is able to take take over at the police department at the 911 center that's about 130,000. we we are, have applied for a grant for that as well uh the other one of the other projects we have is our mobile command post uh we have an old sprinter van that we would like to upfit and get it uh, up to speed on a to be a mobile command post for the police department when they're on a scene for a lengthy period of time such as the O'Charlie's uh, situation that we were there a long long time uh, situations of air conditioners and police uh, we have some new flooring replacement plan for uh, the dispatch room and then we're going to uh, renovate the uh, police community room, which was built back in 2004. This will also help us with, the, with some things that we do with our academy. That's the biggest open room at police uh, that they can use for uh, training with, with the academy. Uh, Chief Hawkins, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I agree pretty well. It's time for uh, this back upgraded the consoles that Jeff referred to are actually Doug you're breaking up that I can help that um, 
consoles are old and they're electronic and they're adjusted and, and they need replacing the and then obviously some improvements for the academy as we move forward are going to be helpful for part of the, uh, our community room as well so okay uh yeah i can't believe that i'm one center in terms of how quickly technology goes out of date but those are 15 years old so that sounds like a really important investment to make and and the new technology will that enable us to be able to accept text messages in our 911 center uh yes uh as a matter of fact we're weeks of having that technology available and uh, sort of ruined my surprise but we're going to ask you to get involved in the testing of that system when it's available well, that's really exciting. I'm really glad that we're able to, you know, make that available to our citizens. Um, so that's great. Thank you. That was my last question. Slim, I think you had something. Yeah, all I wanted to do was to, to uh, reiterate some of the points that other commissioners have made uh, about the detail which city staff went in to construct this budget in a very challenging and unprecedented time. I particularly, from a personal standpoint, uh, appreciated the blended approach. I, I really didn't know much about blended approaches uh, before uh, my meeting with, with the finance staff, uh, but doing so, I think, really allowed the city to create a budget that wasn't just based on last year's that didn't compare, or maybe on what we think it's going to do in the future, Instead, we were able to take years uh, of data and we were able to, to then construct a budget that, that is reasonable, uh, that we think that will really stick as opposed to just having some, some numbers on a piece of paper. Uh, and, and then I would also, so, so thank you uh, to, to Katie uh, and to everybody who was involved in that. The blended approach really helped me uh, better understand why the numbers are where they are today. Uh, secondarily, uh, I, I just wanted to say that I, I want the citizens to understand uh, that the budget is, is still fluid. Uh, it is every year as, as revenues increases, increase or, or as they decline. And if there's any particular aspect about this budget that, that we can improve upon in the future, uh, I believe that we're committed to doing so. That would be all. One last final comment. Yes. Just one last comment, Bruce, and uh, you, you, Jeff, or Kate, you guys can correct me. Um, but I believe this is the 18th year that we've held the line on increasing taxes in the city of Bowling Green. And uh, and I, I just got to say that that's due to growth and development. That's, that's because we have more people living here, more jobs here, people are working, paying taxes. And, uh, and I want to say kudos to everybody that's uh, that's – a part and responsibility for keeping keeping taxes at bay each and every year. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Joe, you're the only one left. I don't have anything. Um, uh, the workforce group that I meet with, uh, if we have a need to request any funds, I will have no hesitation in asking on behalf of the group. I uh, certainly don't want them to be disappointed in any way. Uh, we have things available to us and we will use them when we need to by coming and requesting from the city commission any funds. But our effort will continue, and I think after yesterday, seeing one part of our job take place in the police academy uh, is a great deal. I almost had some tears there yesterday, Doug. Uh, good job. I think you've got a great staff of individuals coming through the ranks 
and the citizens of Bowling Green. I know this is not a part of the budget, but you got you got me started. Citizens of Bowling Green uh, need to be aware of the great police department that we have. And I said a couple of weeks ago, if the citizens don't think we have a great department, then go somewhere else and look at theirs and come back. Uh, we don't have anything to be ashamed of. And uh, a great move, Doug, on your part and your staff's part in bringing that about yesterday. That's all I got right now. Thanks. Thanks. Let me you have know. your hand back up. I just wanted to reiterate uh, somebody to, to, to state when the second reading of the budget is going to take place so that citizens who want to comment on it in between now and the second reading know how much time they have. Yeah, I think it's scheduled for Thursday at 2. I just want to make sure the citizens understand that today is Tuesday. We're doing that in two days. So rather than normally we would do it in two in a two week period, roughly a two week period, so that if citizens are interested in making comment on the budget and they want to do so before it's approved, they only have two days to do so. Just want to make sure we got that out there. Yeah, the uh, time limp, time periods were compressed from the. Uh, first reading, which we normally have in first reading in our first meeting in June, uh, gave finance uh, the extra time it needed to confirm the numbers that they're working with at this point. And we don't have a third meeting in, in June unless it's a special one. So we'll just have that on the 18th. But thank you. All right. Any other questions? I'm sorry. I have one last comment. Okay. Um, I um, I think it's important for the citizens to know that we are uh, commissioners approving the line item budget, but just the overall number. Um, and so then I, I think it's also important to state that as the commissioner, I believe it's going to be really important for our budget to be flexible enough to respond to this moment that we're in. Um, it's not enough to state that you care about the lives of all of our citizens. We have to show that with our actions. And right now we have more people engaged with city government. They are reaching out to learn more and are participating in local decision making for the first time. And this participation um, makes us stronger because we are a democracy. And so I think it's very important that we are transparent and responsive to our citizens. Um, unfortunately, the timing of this budget approval process does not quite align with um, the community conversation about how we all need to work together to overcome racism throughout our community and where we go from here. So I think it's that we need to be willing to adjust our budget as the community conversation moves forward. And I just want to say I'm thankful uh, that in the city of Bowling Green, we have a history of being innovative um, and this present moment calls for that innovation. And our, our city is looking for us to lead um, as an employer in this city, but also as public servants. And I just appreciate all the hard work already done and the cooperation moving forward. Um, so I just ask that we not only be responsible with these funds, but that we will, we will also be responsive. And that was the last comment I need to make. Thank you. Okay, now call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Harrigan? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Uh, first vote on the ordinance passes today and we'll come back for a second vote at the next meeting to finalize the budget. Ordinance 2020, number 14, first reading is an ordinance relating to classification, classification pay schedules. Ordinance amending the classification pay schedules G for general classified, D for department head and management, and U for unclassified part-time employees and authorizing pay increases for fiscal year 2021. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. 
This is uh, just another big piece of the budget that we have to do an ordinance on adopting uh, the adjustments to the pay classification schedules. Uh, this information was in your uh, budget books as well as on the budget presentation presented by Aaron Holsey. Uh, so all of this information uh, in your, your packet today is kind of a regurgitation of what was in your budget book, but just the highlights again, 2.3% uh, COLA, uh, equivalent to part-time employees as well. Uh, we had some savings from a finance reorganization that we're, we're putting in here. We also had some savings from a parks maintenance uh, and golf reorganization that were included in here. And just uh, all the same information that we had in your budget book, uh, chart of your pay classes and uh, schedules and all of that. And Aaron is still with us uh, if, in case you have any further questions. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson, yes. That passes on the first reading. Again, the ordinance requires a second reading, and we'll vote at that next meeting. Municipal Order 2020 97, Municipal Order authorizing continuation of coverage by Sun Life for employee health in health care specific stop loss insurance coverage for fiscal year 2021. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Mosley. I'm going to hand this one off to Aaron Holsey, who uh, has worked, worked with our insurance carrier. Uh, as you know, we're self insured. So I'm going to let Aaron explain uh, this new. Uh, renewal that we're doing with uh, Cheryl Morgan, uh, Aaron. Yes, so every year our benefits consultant, Cheryl Morgan, do the, the shopping of this benefit. We, we need stop loss insurance as a self-insured organization um, just to save us from the risk of really um, multiple high cost claimants. This year, um, Cheryl Morgan went and requested um, solicited quotes from nine different, I'm sorry, 12 different companies, um, including our current vendor, Sun Life. received four responses. Um, and so one of those was from Sun Life and then three additional companies. Last year, when we joined with Sun Life, one of the benefits so was that they had some initial lasers and a laser is when they carve out a patient or they put a different specific deductible on that patient that is not part of the deductible for the city. And, um, but going forward, they say after you, after we join and we, we go on contract with them, as long as you stay with us, we won't have any new lasers. And so there's a benefit to that. Um, so of course this year, our renewal um, came in under the allowed 50%. They only renewed us 30%. And no new lasers, and the agreement for next year is the same, which is um, a maximum renewal of 50% with no new lasers. Um, there was one company that submitted a proposal that was similar in premium, but had additional lasers, and those lasers would have um, added about $3 million in liability to the city. So the cost for FY20 was 627,000, and the FY21 cost with that 30% increase is 859,800. Are there any questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. The motion, the municipal order passes unanimously. Next is municipal order 2020 98. Municipal order approving amendments to the administrative personnel policy and procedures manual for classified employees. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Are we staying with uh, Aaron? Yeah, this is just another uh, revision annual exercise that we do with our personnel policy manual. Aaron has worked on this and uh, Aaron, you wanna give a brief overview or she's here to answer questions, whatever, however y'all wanna handle it. There are t uh, four chapters that are containing any revisions in our personnel manual. Aaron, do you have anything to add? 
There was a chart about two pages that had some of the brief changes that were part of this uh, manual update. Um, and so some of the things were just um, updating policies to match practices um, and a couple of updates I thought to clean up and get us a little bit closer in compliance with state statutes. That's what's revolving around some of the changes with comp time um, and trying to be a little bit more fiscally responsible in the way that we manage over time um, as an organization. Um, we did have a new performance management um, evaluation process this year and so we took a look at some of the um, competencies that we rated employees on and, and we changed um, what those were for the entire city. Um, and then we did update our policy on harassment and updated the complaint procedures to include some stronger language and um, a little bit more defined and specific language about how to report complaints of harassment or bullying in the workplace um, and to include our ethics hotline, which was not previously stated in the handbook. Do you have any questions on those? Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. The municipal order passes unanimously. Next is municipal order 2020-99, municipal order approving career path program amendments of the Public Works Fleet Management Division Equipment Technician Certification Program. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perrich and Mr. Mazel. Our fleet division has uh, really uh, changed over the last eight years. Uh, as noted in your, the memo from Aaron, uh, we went from 301 units to 444 units that we're maintaining. Uh, since 2012, we took it in 2012, we started taking in fire apparatuses for, for maintenance and, and work. Uh, we had outsourced all that up until 2012, but we thought that was going to save us some money. And I think it has, but we have went, we've gone from also in our heavy equipment category, we've gone from 99 units to 197. So that one's basically doubled. So, uh, there's a lot of stuff that those techs and those guys down there at fleet have to know about how to fix different things not just a car anymore it's 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 a mower it's a tractor it's a fire truck so it it's all over the board so i'm going to let aaron explain to you uh what we've done here with this uh some revisions to what we're doing with the fleet technician career advancement program aaron um, one of the first things that I, I do want to express in case anyone is looking at this is that the chart that's included here is the vehicles that our fleet department cares for. So when you, you know, it was zero fire apparatus in 2008 and now it's 15, it's because we used to outsource that. So something that's really important to look at when you look at this chart, it's not only in our growth of equipment, but of, of what we're taking care of is I think that we're actually saving money as an organization by continuing to do more in-house. We're doing more jobs in-house so that we need equipment for that. And then we're taking care of the equipment that we're getting in-house, which is also saving a lot of money. So we had a career pathing program um, put in place already, and it involved technicians going into three different um, job grades as they became certified. And within each grade, there were three different levels and the fleet manager has been looking at those recently and making sure that the certifications that his technicians are getting are the ones that we need for the equipment that we have. And so he um, also streamlined them. So now in, in each grade, there's, there's two levels and there's an incentive in between for the technicians to go and get that certification, um, which is pretty involved. It, it takes a long time. It's kind of like attending um, a, a college course. Um, so it's not something that our technicians can do in a short period of time. It does take quite a bit of time for them to um, become skilled in, um, in in taking care of these different types of equipment and apparatus. So this will be in, in, in between the grades. If they get the certifications required, they will get a $1,200 annual incentive spread out throughout the paychecks. Um, when they move to the next grade, they will keep that with them so that they don't um, go up a grade while moving while losing money. That that would be de-incentivizing. So each time they do that, they'll they'll earn a little bit more money as 
if they get those incentives. And then we did max out the top certification that could be received, which eventually would be $3,600. That would be on our fire apparatus technician. We do have someone that's currently working on that certification, but doesn't yet have it. Um, but we, we hope that, that he will soon. Um, he's of great value to the city. Any comments or questions? I'll, I'll call the roll. Denny? Uh, I have one, Mayor. I'm sorry, I missed you. I have one. Go ahead. So did uh, I. Aaron, how are we uh, in comparison with the market outside of the city? In other words, how is our schedule compared to uh, a mechanic at one of the dealerships or whatever the case might, might may be? Yeah, so we, we did have Chris Crow, our fleet manager, did do a wage comparison study, but he did it about two years ago, which is why I didn't include it because it's a little bit dated at this point. Um, at that time, it did show that we were behind the market now we wouldn't really want to compare ourselves to a car dealership. Um, you know, while we do do some of the basic upkeep on a lot of our, our regular vehicles, um, you know, we have to compare ourselves to the the companies and the shops that work on big heavy equipment. A lot of times, those will involve there's either towing or on-site charges, um, and so we want to keep that in house. Um, but that that wage comparison did not include a comparison of benefits, which we do um, sometimes believe ours to be superior whenever we look out in the workforce, but we do think that this incentive will help close the gap a little bit. Okay, thank you. Slim, did you have something? I did, uh, and let me get back to my note. I can't find my note quickly. <laughs> Proceed, I'm sorry. Any other comments? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Harrigan? Yes. Weasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson, yes. That municipal order passes unanimously. Municipal order 2020-100. Municipal order authorizing the continuation of the agreement with Care Here PLLC for administrating, administering employee on site medical clinic services through calendar year 2020. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Mr. Michael. It's uh, hard to believe that our clinic has been open since uh, January of 2016, but I feel like it's been a tremendous success. Uh, our employees love it. Uh, we've got a great doctor, great nurse over there, great staff, a great couple of doctors. So uh, Care Here is our contractee uh, that we, we do this through. And so we are before you today to ask for another uh, extension of this contract. Uh, we kind of got out of sync, as mentioned in Aaron's memo, with with the uh, the contract with, with fiscal years and, and calendar years. but. Uh, we're coming to you today to ask for uh, this contract to be renewed for calendar years um, 19 and 20, I believe it is. So to get us to the end of the year, and when we get to the end of this this, this calendar year in December, Aaron will probably most likely bring you back a request to renew the agreement for the for additional two year period. They have not increased their fees. Uh, as you'll see in your packet, the 2019 annual report showed a savings of $642,000 to the city for, for primary care services. So uh, we feel like this thing is working. Uh, we don't want to uh, mess with something that, that's working. As they say, don't uh, fix it if it's not broken, but uh, we feel like we have a good thing going. No increase in fees at this time, and I'll let Aaron make any additional comments to this. You Aaron, you have anything else? Nothing else to add. We, as, as Jeff said, we love our doctors and our nurse, and we think that we have a phenomenal relationship with Care Here. We are continuing to expand and um, a little more wellness benefits every year. And 
um, we're very happy with their services, but this, this is mostly to, to, to sync up our agreement with them and uh, our approval from you for the funding. So I, I will, um, assuming nothing drastic happens between now and, and the end of the year, um, we'll be looking to renew for an additional two years. Right. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson, yes. Motion or municipal order passes unanimously. Next item is the first reading of ordinance BG 2020 15, ordinance amending code of ordinances. Ordinance amending chapter 2 administration of the city of Bowling code of ordinances to repeal subchapter 2 23 of the Bowling Green County Military Liaison Board and establish the city of Bowling Green Convention Center Committee. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perry. Uh, Jeff, did you want to do this one? I can just briefly. Uh, the military, military liaison board uh, is kind of, I guess it's still in existence, but they have a really, really hard time getting a quorum together to meet. Uh, they have advised us that they don't see the need in being a city uh, formed committee any, any longer, and they are a subchapter in chapter two. So Gene has worked on this. We had needed to establish the convention center committee because you all told us you still wanted to meet on a quarterly basis, even though the convention center had been has been dissolved or is in the process of being dissolved. So we're going to insert the convention center committee in chapter two and take out the military liaison board in chapter two. And um, I'll turn it over to Gene. Uh, Gene, do you have any further comments on this? Hillary may have had a finger in this too. I don't know if Hillary worked on it or not, but Gene. Yeah, no, I realize that said, uh, Jeff said we're dissolving the board. Uh, I don't, we don't need that board any, any further because we have to deal with the Secretary of State every year. I think you all still express an interest in having uh, meetings. Uh, we could talk to the uh, management of the convention center. Um, as we took that to mean that the kind of committee. The only thing we did, we did was create a committee and put it in Chapter 2. Uh, it will still be meeting quarterly. Uh, it will still be subject to open meetings and open records. Uh, so be the meetings will be advertised just like the board was. Um, but again, this just kind of follows up on the directions that we thought we got from the uh, uh, from the board of commissioners. The difference, one difference, uh, the board, the uh, county judge executive was on that one. This committee will be just the city commission itself uh, w without uh, county representation. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much just like it was before. Two things I'll add to that with the convention center board, the reason that county is not a participant any longer as those bonds are paid off and they no longer have a fiduciary responsibility for the project we have that in-house uh, and then secondly with the military liaison board it's not that it was created back in the late 80s i guess it was to do the veterans day parade and we will still participate uh, with the military group um, to help coordinate and plan that activity it's just that it won't be a city constituted board. We weren't getting any recommendations for those designated slots. So we'll still participate with them in the projects, but not. Uh, it won't be a city mandated board that we have to vote on those memberships. Any other questions or comments? I'll call the roll. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. So the first reading of the ordinance is passed. We'll come back for a second and final reading at the next meeting, which is scheduled for uh, this Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, thank Mayor, you for tuning in. So sorry. Uh, I don't see either in my calendar an invite to a meeting on Thursday, and I'm looking at our email chain, and I don't see anyone saying as a final email that we're meeting on Thursday. So did I, did I miss a notification that we were doing that? I don't know. I got the email request last week asking to have the second meeting on the 18th. So that's, that's when I call that special meeting. 
We'll get uh, we'll get you the life size link out in the meeting notice here shortly soon. Okay, well, I'm going to check my schedule. Hopefully, I can make that at this point. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you for tuning in. We'll adjourn the meeting.